<laughs> hello, hello, and welcome to uh, the uh, Ball and All podcast. My name is Mpo Mkloni, but today's edition is the Basketball Africa recap um, uh, edition, where we're just talking about, it's going to be a daily recap show, where we are recapping all the things that have happened in the Basketball Africa League for the next two weeks. Uh, it starts today, ends in two weeks on the 30th of May, and I'll be doing a daily recap show about four, five to ten minutes um, discussing what has happened. And so today was the first day um, in the uh, Basketball Africa League, also known as hashtag um, the BAL, um, which is the, the hashtag that everybody um, should be um, should be going through uh, and, and following um, as we talk about the BAL and we talk about the game that happened today. But before we start, please do like and subscribe to my YouTube channel where this uh, where this uh, show will be put up, as well as follow me on Twitter and as well as on Instagram um, at Mpomoreki. That's the the handle there at the bottom. So today we started with the BAL. Really, really great effort from Amadou Galafol and his team, the Basketball Africa team, the FIBA team, the NBA Africa team. Um, getting to this point, you know, the Basketball Africa League was supposed to start last year, but due to COVID, it was postponed. Um, and now this year we don't get the full league format that we wanted home and away to conference style type of format um, with like a playoffs that goes over probably six to eight weeks. Now it's just um, one tournament, to, uh, 14 days, get in, get on, get out. Um, three groups, um, top two make it into the playoffs with the, third, with, the th- with the number threes, the third best lucky losers, the best number three teams in, the con- in, in, each, in, in the three groups, two of them going into the playoffs as well. And you play single elimination, quarterfinal, semifinal, final, just like it's a World Cup. So today it started off, it was really lovely to see the Kigali Arena. Rwanda's done a great job. I think Paul Kagame's notion of Kigali being the heart and soul of, of African basketball came to life today. They've hosted a few Afro basket qualifiers. And today this was the pinnacle. And there was a really, really awesome um really really great uh, feel to it there were some fans in there all masked up which is also really nice to see and yeah it was a great production it was uh, a proper production um shout out to asha um who was the um who was the the, the commentator today uh, sitting in the color seat she was just really really awesome great insight from her journalistic career um and so yeah shout out to her so today um, we saw the first game of the BAL, and that was the game between uh, the Rivers Hoopers versus the home team, the Patriots um, of Rwanda, the Rivers Hoopers uh, from Port Harcourt in Nigeria. Um, the interesting thing about the Rivers Hoopers team was that they obviously are the Nigerian champions, but today, obviously, for a lot of us, it was the first time seeing these teams in action, and so we're taking a lot of, of a lot of things and just trying to mix it together and see what what came out today. But for me, the interesting thing was styles make fights. And the interesting thing was both teams came out with a similar style, or one where they wanted to space the floor. They had, um, they would play one predominant center. Um, and if that center could come out into the perimeter and shoot in, 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 in costs now of, 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 of the, um, and Brandon Costner of, of the Patriots that kind of helped because he had like that three point game going on, reminding us all that Marcus All does exist and he's still playing basketball. He also wore the number 33, similar to Marcus Gasol. And so that's what you got. But then the Rivers Hoopers went out in the first five minutes of the game. They were hot. They were shooting from three. Uh, Terrence Sullivan was doing quite well. Ben Uzo was driving really nicely. Um, it was really interesting to see, obviously, because in the, in the BAL, you allowed nine players from the African continent, so in, of African descent, uh, born and raised, uh, African citizens, and then you allowed two players from outside. The Rivers team had uh, Terrence Sullivan, who's American, and so too Daniels, who was their center, who was their center, who was essentially the starting center. Um, and then they got the addition of the fact that Ben Uzo is Nigerian born, and he's played in the NBA, and he's probably the highest rated player in this tournament. So uh, you would initially think Rivers Hoopers have the the advantage and also direct qualifiers, which whereas the Patriots had to go through the qualifiers to make it in, the Bay Rivers are are, are national champions of the Nigerian League and they got a straight ticket through. But it went against the form card. But it was an interesting thing is that the the, the coach of the Rivers, uh, of the Patriots did something very interesting in the middle of that first quarter. The shots weren't falling out of the perimeter. They weren't getting much joy um, 
uh, from from that perimeter spacing game. Let's try drive and kick, get the open three. Wasn't working out, even though his team did have sharpshooters littered in and around. And then he went into a into a, into an interesting um, a change with the bench. The bench coming the bench coming through with Prince Ibe, who's a very dominant center. And with that, um, with uh, Wilson and Shobozwa, as well as uh, uh, Steve Hagu Mitwari. Um, the number 23, Steve Hagamintwari, as well as Wilson Shoboza, who's the number 11 um, of the Patriots. And they just were laid the defensive foundation of this team. Rivers are trying to drive in. They had already scored their 18 points by halfway through. And I think the, the Patriots were on about nine. The Patriots went on like a 9-0 and run to get, well, 7-0 and run to get to about 16 points. And that's how they closed out the first half. There were still a few points behind. But you could see that there was a bit of a momentum shift. In the second half, that bench became what it was. Prince Ibe was the guy. He was defensive. He had three blocks today. He had 11 rebounds. He had 11 points. He was dominating the paint. They kept on leaving the baseline. And the interesting thing was about it was that this Rivers team was a... I wasn't expecting necessarily a team from Nigeria to be to play predominantly small ball and try and drop the three. So if you think about it, today it was a blowout. Um, the uh, Patriots won 83-60, 23-point gap. The Rivers team shot 34 times from uh, from beyond the arc. They only scored six. Um, but the other team, um, the, the Patriots, 11 of 25 um, from beyond the arc, that showed how the change in the in the game was. They went interior, they brought Costner in, and they played a two-man, um, two-big-man set, front court set with the two centers playing high and low. One either was on the perimeter, one was inside. Most of it was Prince Ibra on the inside. Costner was outside. They were willing to give Costner the shot. He took three threes and he, he slotted them in. It was really, really good to see how the change in the Patriots. And then, and then also the one thing about, I think, what we're going to see throughout these two weeks is that there's a certain... The, only, the, the, the Rivers were playing one way. It was one pace the whole way through. You have your point guard who takes his time bringing the ball up. He's not necessarily changing pace as he's going through. Um, but Ben Uzo did quite well for them, scored 13 points. Um, scored 12 points, I beg your pardon. Terrence Sullivan scored 15. Um, and but 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 it was it was kind of that they had one way of playing and they didn't want to move away from that and try bringing uh, Daniels into the into the fray. Um, uh, it, it was just um, Robert Daniels into the fray, um, but it was just something that that we that, that, that I was disappointed from the Rivers team that trying to get, play that interior game, at least try to drive a little bit more, move a little bit. They were just stuck in. They played their one, they, their two man game at the top sometimes, depending on who came through. There wasn't a lot of screens. The screens they said weren't great, um, and so Rivers needs to pick it up. And I'll tell you why um, uh, in in a, in a few moments. But the Patriots just came out. They bowled out. It was, they were at home. You could see the home comforts that they have. They normally pack out that stadium, 10,000 fans, and they dropped the ball. Like, it was incredible to watch. Jermaine Cole, also known as J. Cole, if you're listening to his his album, Off Season, he was playing today. He he, he was a hustler. He hustled. He hasn't. He was a late arrival, but he got three points, three rebounds. Um, I'm expecting one. We're going to get one of those games where J. Cole explodes from three. Um, and I'm excited to see that. Uh, but 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 the Patriots were great. They 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 really dominated the the paint. They defended it well, and 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 that enabled them their three ball to even come through in the second, third, and fourth quarters. Um, they just pulled away. There was a point in the second quarter where Rivers only scored two points, and they were on a like uh, the Patriots were on like an 18 and two run, um, and 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 that can't happen. In, in especially in a in a very short tournament, you don't have time to get yourself in. You need to be hot, even at the start of every quarter. And you can see maybe the timeouts were a little bit longer than they were used to. But and players were called from the riverside. But it was just breaks after breaks after breaks. They shot underneath twenty percent from three. The the shooting from the field was thirty percent. That obviously is it just speaks to the amount of of the great defense that 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 that, that the Patriots had. But it's something that the Rivers need to fix. And the, here's the reason why. In their group, Group A, they've got Monastir from Tunisia, who are also giant team. They're a giant team, and you'll see them tomorrow night um, when they come up against GMBC of Madagascar. They're a giant team, and, 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 and to a certain extent, Rivers needs to beat Monastir to stay inside this tournament because you can't necessarily rely on just beating GNBC of Madagascar, especially after you've been blown out by 23 points because um, that effectively puts you on the back. You already have one 
one foot back as one of the two lucky losers. They might still make it in um, as one of the two lucky third place spots or highest place third place spots, but that will go down to how well they beat GNBC. But for them to stay in this tournament, they need to beat Monastir and they need to hope Monastir beat um, uh, the Patriots and they have a three-way tie. It goes down to points differential and then maybe they can make it in based on the fact that they they have um, they have uh, well, well will have had two wins instead of just one, and I think that's the that's where that two lucky third place spots going to go in the in the in the basketball Africa League playoffs um, for 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 well essentially seven and eight seed. So that's something that, that that they need to look out for. I was really disappointed to see them. I thought they'd come out wild. They they had the luxury of having an NBA a former NBA star who was born in Africa playing for them, and they just couldn't. Do. They just couldn't utilize it, having Terrence Sullivan as well as Robert Daniels with Ben Uzo on the court. There were some really great um, standout performances. I like number 14. Um, that is um, or that uh, number 14 of 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 the Patriots. Uh, number 12 of the no, not the Patriots of the um, of the Rivers Hoopers, Ayak Bay. He's a very strong um, a forward slash center. I think they need to play around him with Robert Daniels inside there. This tournament, I think, is going to be won with points inside the paint. You either need to minimize points inside the paint or you need to maximize on the other end. And so that's where I think that they, they need to kind of fix it, fix it out. But some standout players for me, I know um, I know that Brandon Costner with 20 points and two rebounds was the MVP of the game. But for me, the real MVP was Prince Ibe. He brought on the energy from the bench. And imagine having Prince Ibe coming off the bench. And that's the thing that this Patriots team is 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 is, is, is going to be interesting to watch. Their bench is so good. And the other team's benches will, will, will have to find out. The Rivers bench wasn't that great. But to have Prince Ibe come off the bench, you have Wilson. Um, you have you have uh, Wilson Shoboza. You've got Steve Hagu Mintwari. You've also got um, the captain of the team. That's Aristide Mugabe, who got nine points today, coming off the bench. It's really important um, for this Patriots team, and they can. They were a dark horse, an underdog. Many people didn't think that they would get there. With obviously everyone looking at the six direct qualifiers, but this team, remember, won nine nine all nine of their qualification games to get here. And so this is a team that people need to be afraid of. They put a, Now they have a target on their back, and now the question is, can they replicate it? Can they make sure that they win? In fact, if they win their next game, they're in the next, they're in the next round. So, if they, uh, and so that's something that they need to, um, to look out for. But I was really impressed by the Patriots. I thought they played well. Number 22, Diadon uh, Dizea is a baller of note. He is a... He is one of the stars that they will lean on throughout the tournament. Um, his shooting wasn't great to start off with, but it got better um, as the game went on. He started driving in. He's very strong um, with the drive, and you can see why this team is 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 is, 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 is an underdog and 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 had won gone through the qualifiers um, quite seamlessly um, as they have. Um, but that's was that's that's that that's pretty much my 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 my. My my thing for the game, obviously Ben Uzo got into getting twelve points. Um, uh, uh, it was Terrence Sullivan needs to get more shots out on the perimeter, but open shots, but move like the Rivers are busy to move around, do a lot more sets, do a lot more cuts. If you want to play the small ball Warriors type of play, you need to move the ball quicker, increase the pace, and also on in the half court, you need to make cuts. You need to open people up. You can't just make just do just one move and let it go. You've got a great point guard who can hold the ball up for as long as possible for you to be able to do the move. So that's that's the one thing that 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 the Rivers Hoopers need to do. Patriots just keep doing what you're doing. Styles make fights and you guys just picked it out straight out of that first time out in the first quarter. You turned the game over and that was it. Um but yeah so that's that's it that's that's what it is. Tomorrow we've got games um, group B, you've got GS Petroleum versus as Duans of of uh, Duan of Senegal against GS Petroleum. Um, that is the team. Uh, GS Petroleum is the team out of Algeria. Um, tomorrow at two p.m. South African time. Uh, well, it is. Uh, I think it's twelve GMT, two p.m. South African time. Um, and and then you've got the game after that. You've got Zamalek and Ferravario de Maputo out of Mozambique in Group C. That's going to be a Big big game. Um, uh, obviously, Ferrario qualified, um, not directly. They came through the qualifiers, um, and so that's something that you're going to have to. They, they, that they're going to have to. They want to put themselves up there and 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 see if um, if see if they can take on an African giant. But it's going to be a good good to see. Um, probably 
Oh, to, and then in the evening, you got another powerhouse in Group A, Monastir against GMBC. So you get to see Zamalek and Monastir to see how North African basketball actually truly is. Um, I think it's going to be an eye opener for a lot of us, but I'm really excited uh, that the Basketball African League has started and it's the daily recap. Thank you very much. A little bit longer than I expected, but Nate, tomorrow I'll try keep it around at 7.30. I will probably do it around about this time. The the Monastery game is at 9 p.m., so that'll probably be in a day three recap to discuss how well Monastery did. But uh, do enjoy that. Do enjoy the games tomorrow. Please do uh, follow me on Twitter at Mport Moregi. The, the banner there at the bottom uh, gives you a link, and that's probably where the post will be as well. So thank you very much from myself um, for all the way out of South Africa. Uh, my name is Mpo Mutwani, and this is the Ball and All podcast, the BNL Daily Recap. Lesale, kakakiso.